start by telling us your names. Lester Marshall, Jr. And what did you bring to the harvest today? Old pictures, black and white pictures and postcards, and a book I had published of old pictures. Okay, let's start by talking about some of the old pictures. Um, you have something from the repavement of Market Street. Do you want to hold that up and tell us a little bit, of, little bit about it? Which one was that? I don't remember. It's the one that's open up here. This is a repaving of Market Street in the early 1920s where they had big hunks of tar and they would meld it and had manual labor. Lots of guys walking on planks and that, spreading out the tar over the bricks. And how did you acquire the photos that you have in that book? Most of them I got through Schindler's studio. Mark, when Mark Mallett and his sister bought the business in 1975, Mark was told that after the 36 flood in Sunbury, as long as the negatives were wet, they could pull them apart. But they said they were drying too fast. Schindlers were in Sunbury since 1908. So the negatives from 1908 to 1936, with them drying too fast, said they just threw them all in the garbage. I said to Mark, oh, Mark, I said, you're making me sick. So all the negatives they had today from 1936 up to date. And I was going through the, uh, all the neg each negative was in a separate envelope with the subject, the date and everything. And I would look through the negatives for 15 or 20 minutes and they were in the back room on a shelf. I had to go wash my hands. My hands were that black with all the dust on the envelopes and everything. And then after I started finding all the negatives that's when Mark said, come on, he said, I'll show you how to make them. He showed me how to make the pictures with, uh, he'd turn all the lights out except the yellow light so he could see to take a piece of the paper mm -hmm. out of the box. He had the bamboo tongs with the rubber on the end and dipping it in different solutions and everything. I did that for, I think, two or three months in the early 80s during the, I'd go up at uh, Saturday morning at 8.30 when he opened, and I was there till 3 o'clock when he closed. And then following weekend, I'd be back up again. Wow. And you have another item that ties into the same photo studio. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Your book? Which, I'm sorry, which Your book that you had published? Oh. When I was in the postcard club, there were some members that did one on Montour County of old, old pictures. And I thought, oh, I got a lot of old pictures and that. And I said something to somebody at the bank here in Sunbury to get financing, because like he said, if the bank finances it and they don't sell, then I'm stuck with the money that I owe the bank. So he suggested to go to phase one graphic resources here in Sunbury, who I knew the man that owned the business. Oh, and he, what was his name? Larry Undercuffler. Okay. And he said, or he said, bring, bring some of your pictures in. So I took a bunch of pictures, pictures in for him to look at. And he told me, if anybody's going to make any money on this, I don't want nothing to do with it. I said, no. I said, any profits from the book? I want to go to the John R. Kaufman Jr. Library on Art Street. Okay. And it was roughly, I think he said around 1,300 books published. And he said, you make up a list of who you want to give one to. He says, I don't want to know their names. He said, you just make up a list. And I made up a list and I went in and he gave me X amount of copies and then I gave them to different people. And then where I was working, a lot of people bought a copy of it. Wow, where were you working? Wise Food Service okay. over in Northumberland before they, then they eventually moved over to Sunbury. And then I was a little upset. I went into work on Monday and the girl in the office, Roberta, they call her Bert, she said, there was something in the newspaper on Friday about your book. I couldn't wait till I got home at the end of, at 3.30 that day. Here, the representatives from phase one went up to the library, presented them a check with 2,500. It said, if the remainder of the books are sold, we'll be up with another check for 2,500. They never asked me to go along. I was, 
ticked off. Yeah. And I thought, geez, the library got $5,000 because of me, and I wasn't even invited to go along. So I thought, well, next time somebody asks me to borrow some pictures, I'll, I'll think twice. Well, thank you for sharing that with us yeah. today. Yep, this has, like I said, a lot of... Mike Stevens come down from Channel 16 to Phase 1 and interviewed me. Got his autograph. Uh, Dave Brown, Northumberland County Sheriff. Uh, no, the Chief Deputy. He w The Sheriff wasn't in that day, so the first Deputy Sheriff signed it, autographed it for me. The Mayor of Sunbury, Charlie Mall. Schind uh, Mark Mallet at Schindler's. I just enjoyed history in school, yeah. doing book reports and studying what different countries exported and what they imported and how big a land they, they lived on, you know, different countries and that. And you also have some items related to a family business. Can you tell me oh, a little this, bit more about the business? This was my grandfather's store on Pine Street long before I was born. And after my grandfather died, my dad's one brother, my Uncle Paul, took over the store. But in 52, he had to move to Arizona because his daughter had asthma. And they lived out there for 17 years. And when my Uncle Paul left the area, my dad started uh, taking over the store. And when somebody, and there was the guy, the two brothers that ran the airport on the island, Bob and Larry Guilford, they had pinball machines that they would put in different businesses. And somebody would come in the store and ask my dad for like $5 worth of quarters. I thought, uh-oh, they're going in the back room, you know, to put, because <laughs> they were in the back room, the slot machines. So when my dad wasn't looking, one of us would sneak in the back room and watch him put the quarters in the slot machine. Then every Sunday, when we come home from uh, Sunday school at the Grace Lutheran Church on Spruce Street, uh, after dinner, we all had to take a nap. Well, then after our nap, then we could go out in the store and Dad would give us a free ice cream cone. That's and great. Two, two of the neighbor boys, one of them still living, two brothers, they come up on a Saturday morning and said, Buster, you want to go to the movies? Saturday morning movie, you know, Cowboys and that. Mm -hmm. I says, well, I have to go and ask my dad. So I went in and I said, Dad, Wendell and Clayton want to know if I can go to the movies with them. Yeah, I guess. He says, how much do you need? I says, I don't know. So I went out and asked them and come back in. They said it cost 12 cents. When my dad gave me 12 cents, I turned around and started to leave. He said, wait a minute. He said, here's a nickel for candy. And I thought, that's 17 cents. I'm rich. You know, I never had that 17 cents. Did you get the postcards? Oh, well, Schindler's made the postcard. My aunt, my dad's sister, she had the original, mm -hmm. but Mark, Mark made uh, a bunch of postcards for me, and then I gave them to different family members. This house is still standing in this house, and then at the corner, there's a beauty shop. Well, when we were kids, that was Herb Martz's grocery store, neighborhood grocery store. Now I went out there one time to buy some candy or something, and Mr. Marks is walking up and down the aisle. He's looking left and looking right. I said, Mr. Marks, what are you looking for? Oh, he said, I laid my glasses down so morning I can't find them. I said, they're on your head. <laughs> oh, yeah, there they are. He was walking up and down the aisle looking for them. And do you know who the people are that are in those postcards pictures? Yeah, the... the this one here is my grandfather. That's my Uncle Raymond. My dad's the oldest one of uh, four boys. And these two I don't know, but the guy, or the, yeah, the guy on the wagon I do know. I have that information at home. And you know the names of the horses, right? Yeah, the names of the, I said to my Aunt Pearl, do you know the names of so-and-so? She said no, but I know the names of the horses, Petty Bay and Petty Gray. She didn't know them, but she remembered the names of the two horses. Well, for people that don't know too much about Sunbury's history, uh, what do you think your items tell them about the town? How it changed over the years. 
Really? Weren't, uh, you heard of the squeezing out in Market Street? Mm -hmm. When I started going in there in the late 50s, hot dogs were 20 cents, coffee was a dime, middle school chips were a dime, tasty cakes were 12 cents. Now I think it's two and a quarter, 250 for a hot dog. Yeah. And the movies, well, the, the, right across from the squeeze-in, that big yard that the Zion Lutheran Church bought, that was the Rialto Theater. And I changed the marquee there for five years. And when I first got my tax statement, my wife said, ask Leroy, the manager, if he can pay you every two weeks, because uh, I made 500 and some dollars, he didn't take any taxes off. So then Leroy paid me every two weeks, so then that way would it, they would take some taxes off. Okay. But uh, yeah, like I say, I changed the marquee for five years. And the only reason I did it, I got into movies for free. Wow. If my wife and I'd go to the movies, if we didn't like it, <laughs> get up, get up and walk out. Well, do you have any final thoughts for people watching this interview? No, nothing. Well, I mean, progress has changed so much in Sunbury. The hotels that used to be in Sunbury, the passenger trains that used to go through, it's really, really changed from the 60s.